Up next, I'm gonna do a video where I pick five houses and five fragrances, my five favorite. So I'm picking my favorite fragrance from each of these five houses, and I'm gonna start a little series. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do five at a time, picking five different houses. I'm gonna start out with uh, some houses that are a little bit, I think, under the radar. Maybe introduce you guys to some houses that you're not typically aware of, maybe. So find out what they are, coming up next. Welcome back everybody to Joel the Nose. And as you can see here from Osme Perfumery in Miami. And today's video, you heard the introduction. I'm picking five houses. I'm gonna pick my favorite fragrance right now from each of those houses. And I'm gonna start a little series doing this, you know, five at a time. And I'm gonna kind of work my way through different houses. I'm gonna start out with ones that are a little bit more, I think under the radar for a lot of people that maybe you haven't smelled or don't know a lot about just to kind of introduce you to some new stuff. So let's go right into this in no particular order. I have from the French house, this is Maitre Parfumeur et Gontier, or Gontier, and that is Patchouli 1969. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen this, I've talked about it before, it's one of my favorite, favorite um, patchouli fragrances. And there you can see it. Let me just show you the bottom so you can see the, uh, I want you to see the bottom of the, bottle so you can actually maybe spell it okay there you go so there you can see patchouli 1969 beautiful color beautiful bottle it's got this like interesting tassel with the peace sign hanging off uh, this is based on woodstock and flower power and and very kind of cool backstory on this but this is one of the most I think well blended and beautifully crafted patchouli fragrances that I've ever smelled. Really love this one. Love this house. It again is a little bit more under the radar, but if you're looking to try a classic French perfume niche house, patchouli 1969 is one you gotta try. Next, I'm gonna go to another French house. This is Jeroboam. And my favorite one from this house is Vespero. Uh, this was a tough one because I also really like Ligno, Ligno which is another patchouli bomb. So I didn't want to do another patchouli fragrance since I chose patchouli 1969. But Ligno, if you really like patchouli, you gotta check that one out also from Vespro, I'm from Jeroboam. But Vespro, to me this is, if you like um, Creed Aventus or anything in that similar vein, this is a great option for you. This, they uh, do extrait versions of their, of, you know, their perfumes are extrait. So these are really highly concentrated superior quality again french niche perfumery but vespero to me i think personally i like it better than creed aventus um it is just a more i think intense version of again it's not the same but if you like that that type of vibe that kind of fresh you know citrusy yet still you know not a freshy type fragrance it's gonna have a little bit more kick a little bit more punch that pineapple kind of fruitiness element to it Vespero is great. This is right now my favorite from the Jeroboam house. Next, and this is the newest fragrance and now my favorite, from Rosendo Mateo, the Spanish niche perfumer or perfume house, and this is number seven. Number seven, that's an easy one, right? You can see it there, number seven. This is patchouli, oud, vanilla, like just perfect mixture. Really, really intense. This is probably not going to be for everybody. There are more, maybe a little bit more user-friendly versions between one and six that I really like. Uh, but for, if you are a true niche perfume lover, number seven is a fragrance you got to try. Again, it just came out in the last few months and is absolutely one of my, it absolutely now is my favorite from the house, Rosendo Mateo. Again, let me just hold it up so you guys can see Make sure you guys can see the name there. Okay, hopefully you can see that there. It's got some shadows. Um, again, number seven, try it. Rosendo Mateo, my favorite from that house. Next, this is one I've had for a long time in my house or in my collection from MDCI. So these are MDCI Parfum. 
And this is, as you can see it there, Fet Persan. Fet Persan. Can you guys see it there? Hopefully you can. I'm going to hold it up so I've got plenty of time there. This is, I just wore this one the other day. I hadn't worn it in a little while. I forgot how good it is. Uh, there's so many great ones from this house. This is a really, I think, one of the most underappreciated fragrance houses out there. They have a huge selection of really good stuff, like Invasion Bar Bar, a number of other things that you can really get your nose around. And it's just, everything is like super dense. And these are not simple fragrances. They are extremely complex. If you look at the note breakdown, the note breakdown just goes on and on and on. Like for example, on this one, you've got, just to read you a couple of the notes here, bergamot, black pepper, elemi, oil, rose, cardamom, cinnamon, and this is a beautiful, it's probably my favorite cinnamon fragrance. Clove, white musk, guyac wood, cedar wood, patchouli, vanilla, right? It is truly a blended masterpiece. I try to blend my own perfumes. If I tried to mix that many fragrance notes together, it would be a complete disaster. So how they do this, and by the way, this was, uh, the perfumer behind this one is Cecile Zarokian. She did this probably close to 10 years ago, and she's now one of the hottest perfumers in the world. Totally on demand by all the major houses like Amouage and everywhere else. So this is one of her earlier works, and it is a masterpiece, my favorite from the house of MDCI Parfums. Leaves me with my last choice today, number five, or the, however you want to look at it, and that is from the British or English niche house, I'll say British, Floris, and this is Elite. This is an Eau de Toilette, so it's not an Eau de Parfum. It's gonna be a little bit less concentration, but I, I hate to say this, this one, I've always been attracted to it purely on the color initially, that green, it looks so refreshing and, and like invigorating. And this is, it is, a, I, I would call it a fougere fragrance, but it's more animalic. So Floris is classic British, uh, perfumery, which is a lot of kind of fougeres, which are, they make a lot of really good ones. Number, eight, number eight, they have one called number 89, number 88. Uh, they really do fougere and kind of the barber, barbershop fougere genre, probably better than any house out there. But this one takes it, <clears throat> excuse me, and gives it this kind of very obviously bright green, uh, herbaceous and yet also animalic. So this takes some of the other fougeres and it gets a little bit muskier and a little bit more animalic. Uh, you can feel it's very, very sexy because of that, that, an, that animal quality. So from Floris, again, Elite, let me just hold it up there for you again, is the favorite, my favorite from this house. Check it out if you wanna try something new. I'll do uh, some other videos coming up soon. I'm gonna kind of make my way through doing a bunch of different houses five at a time so you guys can you know not feel overwhelmed. I don't like videos, I've said this before, when I do videos with 10 fragrances, I feel like it's just a little bit overwhelming and you can't really appreciate uh, each one. So I try to keep it down to five for you guys, bite-sized segments. Thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. Peace, love, and perfumes.